You're listening to the Play Like a Girl podcast, episode number 16. You play ball like a girl! I'm Nikki B with Play Like a Girl, made just for female athletes. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Play Like a Girl podcast. I'm your host, Nikki B. Here at Play Like a Girl, we aim to encourage more confidence in young women who play sports and give them the necessary tools and advice to have an amazing career in sports and beyond. If you are a young woman who plays sports and lives an active lifestyle, or you know one of these young women, I am so excited you are here. Each week, we will either bring you a guest in the sports world or have a roundtable discussion of the many taboo and important topics in the world of female sports. Are you with me? Let's change the game. All right, Plague listeners, this week's guest is Megan Foster, who is on the USA rugby team. Megan began her decorated career in rugby at Chico State University in 2011. In 2014, she earned her first collegiate All-American honor playing 15s, which was followed by two more All-American honors in both 15s and 7s in 2015. In 2016, she helped CSU Chico to a D2 national championship, where she was also named the most valuable player. Towards the end of her collegiate career at Chico, she earned her first national cap with an appointment to the squad for the Women's Rugby Super Series that same year. While 2016 was already a big year for Megan, she increased her achievements by being selected to the USA Rugby Women's National Team Fall Tour, which she followed in 2017 by helping her team win the plate at the Women's Elite Sevens Tournament in Las Vegas. That same year, Megan had impressed her way to a selection for the Women's Rugby World Cup Player Pool, where the Women's Eagles finished in fourth place just before she made her HSBC World Seven Series debut. Suiting up for the 2017 Dubai 7s Tournament, Megan and the Women's Eagles 7s finished in second place and were credited with the biggest upset of the weekend for their win against New Zealand. These accomplishments are absolutely amazing, and I was so happy to have Megan on the podcast. Rugby is not a sport that is on TV a lot or broadcasted a lot, so it was really cool to have her on the podcast and talk about that. She also gave some amazing insights on how to deal with friends and really find your tribe um, and really just follow your heart, and I absolutely admire that about her. So please welcome our first rugby guest, Megan Foster. Before we dive into this episode, I want to share the review of the week. We want to start sharing these reviews, so be sure to leave a review with your name and Instagram handle to get a shout out. This week's iTunes review comes from Lauren Abarca, at Lauren N. Abarca, who writes, so good. I love listening to everyone's stories and relating them to my own. Thank you so much, Lauren, for those sweet words, and I'm happy you can relate this podcast to your life. All right, Plag listeners, I am so excited to have our first rugby player on the show. So please give a warm welcome to our guest, Megan Foster. Thank you so much, Megan, for coming on the podcast today. Thank you for having me. I'm super excited. Oh, me too. Like I said, you're our first rugby player. And so I can't wait to dive into all of that. But before we do, I want to do uh, a little rapid fire questions. I do this. Um, I've been starting to do this with all, all of our guests. So are you ready? Yeah. Yeah, okay, I, I cool. think so. <laughs> <laughs> They're pretty easy, but okay. First one is, where do you currently reside? I'm living here in sunny San Diego. Love it. Jealous. Okay. Mm -hmm. And where did you grow up? I grew up mostly in Davis, California, which is right next to Sacramento. Love it. Davis yes. girl. All right. And what <laughs> sports did you play growing up other than rugby, of course? Yeah, I dabbled in a lot of sports, uh, kind of played some softball. I played women's uh, lacrosse for a year, but mostly I played volleyball, basketball, and soccer. Volleyball, basketball, soccer. Cool. Okay. And then what is your favorite quote? My favorite book. No, your favorite um, quote. Oh, sorry. And your favorite book. My favorite yeah, quote. Actually, answer both. Favorite book and favorite quote. Answer both. I'd like to know. <laughs> yeah. Well, I really love, my favorite author is John Gordon. John Gordon, sorry. Mm -hmm. um, he has some amazing, like really easy to read inspirational books. So one of his books is The Energy Bus, and I really love that. Um, and it's just all about just being positive and have positive people around you. Um, so I really like to embody what he talks about in that every day. So that's, I really like that. And then yeah, I my favorite, my list. yeah, I think it's my favorite quote uh, would probably be from Michael Jordan. I'll go ahead and read it. I have it in front of me, actually. I always keep it um, close by, but he says, 
I've missed more than 9,000 shots in my career. I've lost almost 300 games. 26 times I've been trusted to take the game-winning shot and miss. I failed over and over and over again in life. But the most important part of this is, he says, and that's why I succeed. Mm -hmm. Um, And I, like, I can't tell you guys, like, how many times I have failed in life and in sports. Uh, But I totally agree. Like, that's why I succeed. Because we try something new or we nail down something. You know, it's all about, you know, practice makes perfect. You know, it's kind of similar Mm -hmm. to that. Like, we're going to fail so many times, but we're going to learn from that, and that's going to make us better. So I love that. Oh, my gosh. I love you already. I want to <laughs> circle back to this point because Michelle, the uh, Play Like a Girl video producer and I, were just talking about this topic, how literally, like, yeah, for to succeed, you have to fail, and people think that successful people have it all figured out. They don't, and they've failed numerous times. So we'll get back yes. to that because I would love to talk about that. But, yeah. Um, next question, what is one of your superpowers? One of my superpowers, well, I have been told I'm quite the baby whisperer. So, I mean, that, oh. <laughs> that could be one. <laughs> um, but I also like to think I have x-ray vision in a way. I guess if I had one, it could be x-ray vision because uh, on the pitch, um, part of my position in my job is to be a playmaker. So I feel like I'm able to see where the space is and where the gaps are in the field um, to make my team most successful to like put people through those. That's amazing. Okay. Yeah. And lastly, who is your favorite athlete? Favorite athlete at the moment probably has to be Serena Williams because she's just amazing in all aspects of life. I mean, she's been the top of her sport for over a decade. She's a mom. Like she's gone mm-hmm. through she's gone through all of that. Um, she's an advocate for women in sports and she's willing and like she stands up for what's right and mm-hmm. what's important. And she was actually one of the first female athletes that I really admired for her body um, because she's so strong and so beautiful and she mm-hmm. owns that. And I love that. Oh yeah. I think, yeah. I mean, all of us female athletes can all look up to Serena Williams, you know, even though she yeah. is a tennis player, like any sport, any athlete, we can all look up to her. Cause like you said, all those qualities yeah. about her just, make her a very inspirational human being. Yeah. So that is awesome. Okay. Well, mm-hmm. let's jump into the interview. So All right. firstly, I admittedly and shamefully have to admit that <laughs> I know nothing about rugby. I've like kind of seen it a couple times in high school and in college, like watching, you know, passing it by on the field. Sure. But so for myself and listeners who don't know, give us, I mean, it's probably going to be hard to like, you know, long story short, but what is like, give us a run, run rundown of rugby. Um, that way we can kind of follow along in this interview and know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no problem. No problem. It is a growing sport. So a lot of people have never heard of it or never seen it. So it's totally fine. I get that all the time. <laughs> um, but uh, I'd have to say the easiest way of explaining it is kind of a mix between American football and soccer, where in football, Similarly, it's full contact and we tackle each other, Um, but except a major difference is that we don't have the gear that football does. It's literally our bodies and a mouth guard. Um, So that's a big, (laughs) that's a big difference. Um, And then another huge difference, I guess, is in football, obviously you throw the ball forward. Well, in rugby, you can only throw laterally or backwards. So that's always like hard for people to wrap their head around. Yeah, it's really weird. Um, well, not weird, I guess, but <laughs> it's really interesting. So you can advance the ball forward by passing and either like running around or running through someone or if there's a missed mm-hmm. tackle, you know, getting through that. Or we can also kick it forward, which is kind of where soccer comes in. So like spatial and field awareness um, that you use in soccer is pretty similar to rugby. And then, like I said, you can kick the ball forward and have people chase on to it. So wow. it's probably that's yeah. a great explanation. I feel like I'm pretty knowledgeable about rugby now. And also <laughs> I didn't know that you don't wear any protective gear on you. That's absolutely insane. Um, yeah. so we'll talk about that a little bit later, but I want to know, cause you talked about, you played a bunch of different sports growing up. So how did you get into rugby and how did you just become passionate about it? Um, and yeah, how did you get to where you are now? Yeah, I started playing rugby in college as a lot of people my age did. Um, and initially I went, I went to Chico State University and I started there playing varsity soccer for two seasons. So I got recruited to play there. And then after those two seasons, it just wasn't the right fit for me. And I knew I needed to change it up. And 
Chico State is a D2 school, and rugby, although it was a club at the time, it was Division One. So we played against Stanford and Cal and UC Davis and all these big schools. And I that excited me. The, like, the high competition um, is what really drew me into it. And I had so many friends, not so, I had a few friends growing up um, in high school, and they tried to recruit me during high school, but it was always during <laughs> soccer season, so I never played. And so when I knew I needed to move on, I was like, why not? Like, I'll try it out. Um, and so I did. And then I kind of never looked back. Yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah. So I didn't know you didn't even start playing rugby until you were already in college. So do you mm-hmm. know, and I know it's a club sport, I think, for the most part in all schools. So how, what is the college rep- recruiting process like for rugby? And like you said, do most um, athletes get into it? like during college or like what's that college recruiting process like? Yeah. Well, it's changed a lot since I've, Mm -hmm. uh, since I started, I guess. Um, and there, it is, like I said earlier, it's growing, which is awesome. So Mm -hmm. there are starting to be like youth programs that are getting more developed, especially like here in San Diego, a girl that I played Mm -hmm. against in college, she runs girls rugby and it's incredible. They start off super young, like five to eight years old and they play Mm -hmm. flag. And then eventually it grows in to touch and tackle. And so there's more programs like that that are popping up throughout the country that are allowing girls to play at a much younger age. And then there's a lot more high school teams that are also um, not only being created, but getting developed as well. So a lot of girls are starting to be noticed in high school now. And there's a high school Americans program through USA Rugby, which is in charge of all the rugby in the United States. So that's a really awesome program. And if Mm -hmm. any of the girls can get involved with that, that really helps with their development into college and potentially onto the national team later on. And so there are also varsity programs as well. So there's in all aspects and all levels, there are teams popping up. And so with the varsity development program, a lot of, um, I don't know the right words to say, um, but there's a lot more focus on it, I guess, Mm -hmm. in a way. So there is opportunity for girls to get scholarships. Um, But either way, there's a ton of club teams in, in college and either way, like, I don't know, I lost my train of thought, but no, there's a lot awesome. of opportunity, I guess, is what I'm trying mm-hmm. to say. For sure. Well, I think that's so yeah. awesome that it's growing because like I said, I didn't know much about it and I was so that's why I was so excited to interview you because I'm like, I think rugby Thanks. is a cool sport and I have seen it starting to grow. So I think that's awesome. But talk about your college years and so how you went from soccer and really what it is that made you uh, feel like you needed a different change, a different direction and how like it happened that you got into rugby and then really fell in love with it. Talk about that process. Yeah. So I, 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 some people get burnt out. Like once they get to college, you know, they've been trying like training so hard and trying and they're just exhausted. And I still love soccer. I I never got tired of it. Um, But unfortunately it was really the team that I just didn't see I didn't really meet eye to eye with a lot of mm-hmm. the other women on the team and I didn't feel valued on the team as well. And that was just really tough for me. I'm like, I, I can go and I can play soccer anywhere and I can still love it. You know, that's mm-hmm. great. But I'm with these women every single day and I want to feel valued and I want to, you know, be really close friends with them. And unfortunately we just weren't meshing as well as I'd hoped. Um, so after two seasons of that, I was like, I just, you know, there's, there's other people that, um, that I'll get along with better. I just know it. Mm-hmm. And like I, I think I said earlier, um, it was women's rugby was so competitive at the D1 level. And that really excited me. Like I, mm-hmm. I've i completely competitive sports all my life. And I really was like, I don't know what I'd do if I didn't. So mm-hmm. I'm going to try this out and see what happens. Um, and at the time, I was even living with a rugby alumni and you know she was obviously pushing my buttons like try it out it's so much fun these girls are great and and so I was like okay I'll do it I'll do it so I got up early morning I think it was like in January when we like a week before we got back for school I got there a week early I got up I showed up to the track at 7 a.m and I was the first one there and I was like did did 
tryouts get canceled? Like, what's going on? I don't oh know. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> um, but, no, I'm just – it's – my mother has ingrained to me, like, always be early. So I was just mm-hmm. early, and everyone else showed up on time, and I killed it in tryouts. I just came from, like I said, varsity soccer. So I was very in shape at the time, um, and the girls were just so accepting and warming. And I, I was like, these are my people. Like, this is this is so great. And – and I played, I did just being athletic. I was, I mean, I was a goalie in soccer, so I'd always been working with my hands as well, my hands and my feet. So that really helped me in rugby and the mm-hmm. positions that I do play. And I just, I don't know, it was just so much fun. And there was so, yeah. the like potential for growth in it really excited me. Like I was kind of at the top of where I was going to get for soccer. Um, you know, I was good, but I wasn't like Alex Morgan good, you know, so, (laughs) you know, and that was okay. Um, but with rugby and it being so new and still developing, like I, there was so much potential in it and I loved Mm -hmm. it and it just made me want to train harder and and I did. Yeah. I love that. And I love that you noticed that, you know, you weren't seeing eye to eye and like the, the thing that I love is you kind of wanted a tribe. You wanted, um, everyone on the team, it's hard when you travel and you're spending so much time with those people. And if you're seeing eye to eye, if you know, you know that it's not the best fit for you. I love that you acknowledged that and you said, I'm going to make a change. And you found that group of people that really, you know, like spoke to you and that really welcomed you in. So I think that's great advice in itself for our young listeners. Like it's okay. And it's, but it's, you know, you got to acknowledge it and then find a new tribe and find, you know, that group of people that's really going to lift you up. So that's really cool. Yeah, definitely. How did you learn rugby so quickly? Because I feel like, like you said, it's a little bit complicated. It's a mix of American football and soccer. So did it just come pretty naturally or did it take some time to figure it out? How, what was that like? A lot of people (laughs) learned to play rugby by just playing rugby. Mm -hmm. There are honestly so many rules um that you just you can't like give someone you can't sit someone in a classroom and give them a few lessons and then just say okay now you're ready and if Mm -hmm. you think about it there's so many sports that we grow up watching like people learn people may have never played basketball before but they might know what majority of the rules are because they grew Mm -hmm. up watching it their family always had it on tv or similar to football and other sports like that well rugby is not really on tv that much even Mm -hmm. now so a lot of people haven't been exposed and it's, it's a lot of just trial and error, <laughs> to be yeah. honest, you know, totally. obviously training and practice and watching it, watching it on our own really helps as well. But yeah, it's a lot of just getting in there and going for it and learning after you make a mistake. <laughs> yeah. I think that's with any sport, like to really learn everything about the game, you just got to dive on in and just do it. So yeah. that's awesome. But what was your process like, um, out of college? So getting out of college and then getting recruited, um, for the U S rugby team, what was that like? Yeah. So initially in college, I, I mean, I loved it. I enjoyed it, but I, I don't know if I saw the full potential in myself to really play for the national team. So I was like, this is great. But, you know, post-college, who knows what's going to happen. Um, and then it was actually my last – but I was lucky enough to get invited to some All-American camps. And I was a collegiate All-American for rugby. So that was really great. And my fourth year, my fourth camp for collegiate All-Americans, I – it was in – it was at James Madison University over on the East Coast. And I got brought in and I got in that night and I saw the head coach for the women's national team and, you know, he introduced himself and I introduced myself and he's like, yeah, yeah you're going to be playing with the women's side this camp. And I said, I'm, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> and he's like, yeah, like I thought I was playing with the collegiate team again. You know, I was like, maybe this is my last hurrah. Like, I'll do my best, have fun. And he's like, yeah, you're going to be training with the women's team. And I was like, wow. okay, here we go. So then I just spent <laughs> the rest of the week with training with the women, and it was amazing. And, yeah, I definitely was low on the totem pole there. But it was the first time I think I thought to myself, like, hey, like maybe I can do this. Like maybe mm-hmm. this is a goal I can achieve. Like why not? Um, so that was that was really awesome. And so – Right after that, I graduated college and I ended up moving home, got a job at home at a law office and I was working full time and the best team for me to play on within like a driving 
as much as I could drive was two (laughs) hours away. And so I spent three to four days a week driving two hours one way to trainings and games to play with this team that I knew was going to make me better and knew that the women were, again, were going to be the right fit for me. Um, And so I did that for a year. And then I got invited to move down to San Diego and train in Chula Vista at the Olympic Training Center eventually. Um, So that was pretty cool. That's so awesome. Well, yeah. and I think it's so funny that because I looked at your bio and you have won a lot <laughs> of awards, a lot of games. You, um, you in 2014, you earned your first collegiate All American honor and yeah. um, playing 15s, and then followed by two more All American honors in both 15s and 7s in 2015. So, and then you were also you helped Chico win a D2 national championship, correct? And you were MVP. So, with all these awards and everything that you've done now, what would you? What would you attribute all of that success to? I would have to say mostly the work ethic and the discipline that was ingrained in me by my mother. Mm-hmm. She, she, uh, well, I grew up in a military family. My parents all retired Air Force of 20 plus years. And my entire life, my mom has just pushed me to be a good person and to always be better and strive to be my best. Mm -hmm. And so with that, I've developed a really great work ethic, I think. And not to mention, I just have like a really, as a lot of athletes, my, at my level do, we have a really strong competitive edge. So just Mm -hmm. always wanting to be better. Yeah, I think so. I think, yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, growing up in a military family, you got that discipline down, like (laughs) you got it ingrained in you for sure. Oh, yeah, Uh, that's awesome. So becoming now a professional athlete, what are the pros and cons of being a professional athlete? Because I feel like a lot of people think of it as being very glamorous. But you know, you just said it's a lot of hard work. It's your discipline, your work ethic. So what are the pros and cons of being a professional athlete? Yeah, there's a lot, <laughs> um, <laughs> but I guess I can sum it up as like a few for, for each and I'll start with the cons and one of them, um, unfortunately for a lot of, for pretty much all of the women's rugby players, at least we're professional athletes, but so many of us also have to work, unfortunately, because mm-hmm. the money just isn't there yet. Um, right. and we're working on that, but mm-hmm. at the moment it's not there. So that's really tough of trying to be your best person, your best athlete, but also, after 40 plus hours a week of training, you're also having to work. And a lot of times mm-hmm. it's it's a part-time job. So maybe it's not like standing on your feet. So it's like a waitress or a barista at Starbucks or something like mm-hmm. that. So that's obviously t- having – like in order to survive financially, we're being taken away, unfortunately, a little bit from being the athlete that we want to be. Right. So finding that balance is kind of tough. Um And as you can imagine, with the amount of time we do spend on all of this, unfortunately, we miss out on a lot of some like family events or Mm -hmm. um, like this year, I missed two weddings, unfortunately, for some of my friends because I had really important rugby competitions. Mm -hmm. Um, So missing out on family time or friend time or family events like that can obviously be pretty hard at times and having to make those decisions is really tough. Um. Not to mention just obviously the many grueling days where you just fentil- mentally miss it. Oh my gosh. Physically <laughs> and mentally just worked. And the days where, you know, you fail so much more than you succeed and just mm-hmm. getting through those because you know that something is better, something better is coming and, you know, it's only going to make yourself better. Um, but on the other hand, there are so many pros to being a professional mm-hmm. athlete. You know, and one thing that I love is inspiring the youth, especially with such a growing sport, knowing I do have a lot of power, really, and Mm -hmm. I should, just like Serena Williams, like, I should be able to use it. I should be an advocate, and I was just, I just got back from a 15th national team tour where we went to the UK, and one of the places we played was England, so we played against the England women's team, and after the game, we got to go around and think the fans and there's this mom that kind of yelled out to me and like asked me to take a photo with her daughter and of course I said yes and they were just the sweetest little family her little her little girl's name was Ella and you could tell it just meant the world that she was able to meet this professional rugby player I think she was 
somewhere between like eight and 11 years old. And she Mm -hmm. just loved it. And that just meant so much to me because I was like, look what I'm doing. Like this, I'm here. Like I'm excited to meet her. She's excited to meet me. Like, this is so cool. Um, as well as, you know, being able to travel and like rugby, rugby took me to the UK. Like, that's amazing. Some people have never been outside of the United States before and they play rugby and they're able to travel and it's paid for. (laughs) How awesome Mm -hmm. is that? (laughs) Um, last year I went to Dubai. Like I would never go to Dubai, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, but I got to go because I play rugby and, and that's incredible. And then another pro for me, which is super huge, as I mentioned, I come from a military family. So in a way, this is my way of serving my country and representing my country and, you know, bringing pride to our nation. And so every time I put on the jersey, it's it's in, it's an incredible feeling. I can't even really explain it. Oh, my gosh. I love all of that. And <laughs> I have to tell you, like your story about meeting that young girl, like that brought tears to my eyes because <laughs> I actually just interviewed my and which will come mm-hmm. out soon on this podcast. I just mm-hmm. interviewed the my like golf idol, the golf icon, the girl that got me into the game of golf. And mm-hmm. so I know that you literally could have changed that girl's life. And like, it's just yeah. such a cool feeling. And I think, you know, this is part of the reason why I have this podcast. Um, so I love that you said that because it just warmed my heart so much. Thank um, you. And yeah, you, you may not know it, but you could have totally changed that girl's life. And so that's just oh. the coolest thing ever. Um, but Thank yeah, and along you. with that, the traveling is just awesome. Like sports get, allow you to travel to such amazing places. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and I want to know from you too, because you, you've said a couple of times that rugby, you know, is, is growing right now, but it's not where you guys want it to be. What do you think it's going to take to get it to where you and your teammates like really want it to be? What do you think are steps that, you know, we as the female like athlete or female sports world can do? And what do you think like media and society kind of has to do in order for, for it to just get more popular and for you guys to be seen and heard more? Yeah, that is a really good question because <laughs> uh, it's definitely something, it's definitely a topic that keeps coming up in mm-hmm. our sport a lot lately. And obviously one huge thing would just be coverage, Um, you know, Mm -hmm. with social media or on TV, just coverage of the game and awareness and having it in the Olympics, this past Olympics Mm -hmm. was huge for us. It was absolutely huge. You know, people saw it for the first time. They might've just been flipping through the channels and they're like, oh, what's this? And they watch it and they're like, hey, this Mm -hmm. is entertaining. Like, this is so cool. You know, so getting it on TV or having it streamed even because a lot of the times, um, in the past years, you know, a lot, we've had a lot of games and national championships or something, and maybe they haven't even, family members aren't able to attend in person, but they can't even watch it, you know, mm. um, or even just there's the, the Olympic team is sevens rugby, which is seven style, which is different than 15s. And the difference is the number of players on the field. So seven versus 15 on each side. And then because of it, the seven, like they're, fewer people on the seven team on the field. It's a lot quicker game. So typically you have a tournament in like a day or two where in Mm -hmm. 15s when we have like a world cup, it takes weeks to have a game because it's so grueling and so physical because there's so many bodies on the field. Mm -hmm. And so this past seventh tournament that they had, the men's team was, um, broadcasted, I guess what on ESPN but the women's Mm -hmm. weren't, you know, Mm -hmm. so we're dealing with that inequality as well. Um, so like part of, part of me was like really excited that, Hey, we're getting rugby on TV, but at the same time, it's like, okay, well, like you said, what does it take to get the women there as well? And it takes, I don't know. I don't know exactly what it takes to be honest, but you know, for us women, we just, every day we're working to be better Mm -hmm. and, we're, I mean, I feel like we're speaking out more and we're getting, again, more recognition. It's kind of just mm-hmm. letting people know about us so people can get right. excited. They can make those decisions for themselves. Like, we don't want to force someone to watch us, obviously, but we want to be our best selves so people want to see us, I guess. Definitely. Yeah, I love that. I think yeah. a lot of it, too, like you said, it's just more coverage. And 
the cool thing is though like you girls can be totally in charge of that like with the power of social media today like i would say you girls need to showcase what you can do because you guys are like what you can do is so cool and i just think it's awesome like you don't even have protective gear and it's such you know an intense contact sport um so definitely showing like your training regimen showing like what you do on games and educating people on how rugby works i mean yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think really that is a just, huge one as well. Oh, for sure. Like educating on what like rugby is and all of that. But yeah, with social and digital media, I think, um, yeah, like it's, it's with all sports though. Right. And that's the hard thing yeah. with, like you said, the men's rugby team was broadcasted, but the women's wasn't. And that happens with a lot of different sports, but mm -hmm. I think we're on our way there. You know, girls like us, yeah. we want to, we want to make that change. So I love that you're so totally. passionate about, about, you know, getting more, um, yeah, getting more out there. So that's super cool. So um, I, what I want to know too, we kind of talked about that one girl that you had met. Uh, what is your best advice for young female athletes um, in college and also turning professional, but just your best advice in general for those young female athletes? Yeah, I think I have a few things that I can tell them. And, you know, maybe one thing resonates with person, one person, not the other, or maybe you like all the points I have. Mm -hmm. um, but one thing that's really huge for me that in one word that I is really important to me is resilience. So I would just say be resilient. There's going to be a lot of times, again, where you get knocked down, where you fail. But if you're able to get back up that many times plus one, then things are going to work out. Um, and one thing that we talk about in rugby all the time is control the controllables. And there's a lot of things that are going to be out of your hands. There's going to be times where you're so like, you're not selected and you expect it to be selected, but it's, it's what you do after that. That's important. You know, what can you do? Like you are in control of your work ethic, your effort, you're in control of your attitude, you know, so focusing on those things, because that's what's going to lead you to success. Mm hmm. Um, another thing I would say is figure out what you want or know what you want and just be relentless in pursuing that. Because again, there's going to be so many naysayers. Like even me, I've had people say like, Oh, like, are you really going to play rugby after college? And I said, yes, yes, I am. Mm -hmm. Like, I love this. Heck, I'm going to pursue yes. it to the fullest extent. <laughs> um, so just be relentless. Um, another thing that's really important is finding a good support system. So earlier on, we talked about finding our tribe, that's mm -hmm. going to be huge and important. Um, cause again, on those days you're exhausted and you want to cry and you're so tired, mm -hmm. like even just having one person to be able to call or go to and just say like th someone that's just able to lift you up. Like that's, mm -hmm. that's so important. So whoever that is or whatever group that may be, you know, find them and love them cause they'll love you back. And, I love and, that. Yeah. Oh my gosh, those were such <laughs> amazing pieces of advice. Um, and it's it's so true. And I love yeah. the resilience and then the relentless. It's so true. I was actually just having a conversation about that with a friend. And she said yeah. that, you know, people aren't going to agree with you. So you need to find what it is you are meant to do, what your purpose is, and you have to go full throttle. And if anyone says, you know, anything that can maybe uh, tear you down for it. You have to say, Nope, this is what I'm doing. And like, you have to be full 100% all in, um, yep. and not let anyone, you know, tell you otherwise. So I think that's amazing. Um, Thanks. yes. And then what, uh, one other thing, cause since this is the play, like a gold podcast, um, and obviously <laughs> rugby is a tough sport. Um, is anyone ever like surprised or say things that, um, kind of are along the lines of like, girls can't keep up with the boys, have you ever like, you know, faced anything like that? Um, especially cause I think you're like five, seven, 150 pound woman. Um, and like, you know, I feel like a lot of people would just be like, you know, can you really handle that? I, I mean, what is it like for you? Um, with, when people say kind of things that are like more negative about, about what you play? Yeah. I uh, mostly, I would probably just want to say, watch me simply mm -hmm. like come to my game, come out, watch me. Watch me, watch my teammates. You know, we can do incredible things. Unfortunately, there is a lot of time. There are a lot of times where either myself or someone else gets, oh, you're too small. Or so often we get, oh, you're too pretty to play rugby. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what does that have yep. to do with anything? You know, like that doesn't matter. Um, 
And, you know, a lot of people love this saying, like, it's not the size of the dog in the fight, size of the fight in the dog. Like, that's so true. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't matter how tall you are, how short you are, how big or strong you are. Like, that's one thing I love about rugby is it's good for so many different body sizes. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're five, ten, six feet, great. We have a position for you. If you're five foot and you're really fast, like, that's totally fine. Again, we have a position Mm -hmm. for you, you know, and everything in between. Um, so I love that about rugby and I would tell them again, watch, watch. Um, like I mentioned earlier, the sevens team, they have a seven circuit, which is like the, the season, the league, the tournament every year. Um, they have like, depending on the women's have usually about six tournaments, the men have 10 or so, um, each year, but it's like, go out and watch that. These women are incredible. Mm -hmm. Like you cannot tell me that watching, these sevens teams like New Zealand, USA, Australia, even women's 15s teams, you can't tell me like watching them isn't entertaining, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And that goes for other sports as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, go out and watch Alex Morgan, watch Simone Biles, Ronda Rousey, anyone like you cannot Mm -hmm. tell me that's not entertainment. Heck yes. And I love that you just brought all that up because that's kind of what I wanted to get out of you. And it's so true. It doesn't matter what size you are, what you look like. And I love that you said it's the fight in the dog. That is just so true within, um, all, all female sports. And I think that's so cool that you just said that. Um, well, do you have any final thoughts for our listeners? Anything that you'd like to talk about or give advice on? Um, that's a good question. I don't well, know. I think I didn't ask you too. Actually, uh, is injuries did because obviously we've talked about rugby is a very like competitive contact sport. Did you ever yeah. have you ever had any injuries with rugby? I've been pretty fortunate where I haven't had anything that's taken me out for more than a month. Mm-hmm. Um, there are there. I mean, there's obviously like you said with all the contact, there is definitely a potential um, for injury, but that's also why we practice so much is that we can be the safest we can be. That's why, you know, we put so much emphasis on tackling safely. Um, cause that's usually where the most injuries occur obviously is during a tackle. Um, but yeah, I guess myself, it's, we put a lot of effort into, we call it prehab, I guess. Mm -hmm. So it's really preparing our bodies before they even break down to, you know, be mm-hmm. resilient and be strong. So we do a lot of work um, every single day, most of us every single morning, and it includes stretches and exercises and just being mobile and keeping our body moving so that they can perform the best and that they're less likely to become injured. And, you know, at the level that I'm at, we're pretty fortunate to have trainers and coaches that monitor our levels of training. So maybe if we went really, really, really hard in the gym in the morning, maybe our training session on the field is a little bit lighter or vice versa. So, you know, I was really learning those balances of like pushing yourself to physical and mental limits, but also having the balance of taking care of yourself and your body. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That's so smart and so true, especially for an athlete. That's one thing I love to talk about. Like you have to take care of your body, you have to fuel it right, you have to properly train. Um, It's so important. But um, so where can everyone find you before we go before my final (laughs) question? Where can everyone find you on Instagram, whatever, all your social media plugs? Where can we watch you or where can we like see your games? I know you said they're not broadcasted a lot, but would love to know like where we can find you and follow you. Yeah, absolutely. So I can't say I'm on it much, but I do have a Twitter. I'm trying to be a little bit better at it. Um, (laughs) And that's actually MJ Fosty which is kind of interesting. I got it from my, <laughs> my first name's Megan, obviously middle name is G and last name Foster. So it's just a mixture of stuff. Um, so again, like I said, you can try and be a little more active on that. Um, but I'm mostly on Instagram and Facebook. So on Instagram, it's Megan F 15. Um, I post a lot about rugby in my life there. So hopefully I keep it entertaining for you. And then on mm-hmm. Facebook as well, I just Megan Foster Um, I do post about my games a lot, my schedules and when they are streamed, that's typically where you find that information. Perfect. Good to know. I will definitely check that out. And final question for you. What does playing like a girl mean to you? Playing like a girl to me, um, again, means 
being resilient and relentless, pretty similar to what I said earlier, and just doing what makes you happy. Um, Because like I said, so often, like women aren't, even at the professional level, you know, we don't or can't be paid as much as the men. So we're really truly out there because we love the sport Mm -hmm. and it's what makes us happy. So again, be relentless in that pursuit of happiness and be amazing regardless of where you come from or what advantages you may or may not have. Just Mm -hmm. owning that. Love that. Well, thank you so (laughs) much, Megan, for coming on the podcast. It was truly a pleasure. And yeah, you can find everyone on her social channels, but thank you so much, Megan. Thank you so much. This was so fun. If you love this episode, please share it with a friend who you think will love it too. If you have just a few minutes to leave an honest review on iTunes, we would appreciate it more than you know. You can also send any questions or topics you'd like us to cover by sending us a DM on Instagram at playlikeagirlmp. We want to know what you want to hear. Before you go, screenshot this episode and tag us at playlikeagirlmp so we know you're listening alongside us. Thank you so much for listening to episode 16 of Play Like a Girl. We hope you come back for more. Once again, I'm Nikki B, and remember to never stop playing like a girl. You play ball like a girl! I can be a girl in a man's game A diamond in the dark